Previously on Two Up and Overloaded, we were going on a road through Indonesia that stretched between two volcanoes. One of the volcanoes was the most active volcano of Indonesia, which has 120 volcanoes. It is Merapi. And the other one is Merbabu, and it's Merbabu. just dor dormant. <laughs> I just love that name. It's awesome. We had just stopped for lunch at this awesome restaurant that had views of the volcanoes all around. Oh my goodness, look at this spot that we found for lunch. It is forbidden to hike this volcano because it was erupting just last month. As we finished up eating at the restaurant, we headed off down the road. Yay! Alright, there's that. Yeah, that's beautiful. And as we were going along, we realized that it was getting even mistier and cloudier and colder and darker. It was like we were on the road to Mount Doom. The weather started to change it started to get a little bit more cloudy. It got a cool. Cooler. For yeah. the first time in Indonesia, it was like, it's a little chilly. We had our climb little mesh suits on, which is... For hot weather, oh, perfect. Man. It's but... per yeah. <laughs> no, it's per it's, well, we always run at 10 different degrees. Yes. I was like comfortable for the first time, and she was like <laughs> cold, and I'm like, no one is cold in cold. Indonesia. <laughs> this is the chilliest I've been. Outside of I know. air conditioned room. I'm on the verge of being cold. I know, right? <laughs> we were mind. high up on the mountain. Yeah. This is a nice road for sure. Oh, yeah. Misty, twisty, sunny, and misty, and cloudy, and. It was, you know, a twisty road because we're climbing up an elevation and we finally hit the apex and we're going back down and there's even more twisties. But every time we would turn just a little, just like... Yeah, there was this horrible and I'm grinding sound. Like, like four degrees. I knew it was the kicks of the center stand because there was nothing else that it could have been. Right. And I noticed that it kind of it kind of floated a little, right? Like the center stand, it would and the bike would be mm -hmm. upright. But there was uh, the spring to keep it up against the, the belly of the bike had uh, been expanded too many times or something. I just didn't want anything to catch on like a pothole or something because right. then that's instantaneous. It seemed quite dangerous. Yeah, you never want to be like dragging a little tail hook against anything. But you know, we just kept going, but the problem was even worse than we had thought. This is the story of how we discovered that our motorcycle had a real problem and that it was much worse than we had originally thought. Hey everyone, nice to have you here. We are Tim and Marissa No Tear. I ride in the front and I'm in the rear. We travel the world and we pack too much gear. Oh, all the places, places we'll, we'll go. go. Through rain and through seed and through mud and through snow. Oh, all the, the things, things we'll see. see. We've been to a country or two or three. Oh, all the, the fun, fun we've, we've had. had. You have you along would make us real glad. So give us a like and, and hit subscribe to join us along our epic ride. The road that we had chosen was taking us deeper and deeper into the path between the mountains. The, actually, they're not mountains, the volcanoes. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I'd just been so used to the bright colors of Indonesia for yeah. so long, that bright, bright sunshine, that lush green color, and then it kind of had this more Scottish Highlands look to it. I loved it. It was like 70 degrees for the first time <laughs> in the middle of the day. There were some cute little villages along this road that were just very picturesque with their Indonesian style rooftops with views of the mountains all around. 
This road was turning out to be awesome. And so we want to dedicate this road to Emmaus Moto Tours. We've uh, ridden some pretty cool roads over the last like six years now of yeah. traveling. Some of the coolest ones in the, the states are on the BDR. There's anywhere from you know, the Northeast BDR to the Pacific Northwest, Colorado in the middle. Mm -hmm. Arizona, Nevada, oh my goodness. Just, it's and they're all so incredible. Building, building more and more. I think uh, Oregon just came out with Ooh, a new one. And that's did, exciting. You know, if you want to create your own memories and, and make sure that uh, you don't nearly fly off a cliff. Yes. Because that can happen <laughs> on the BDR. True. You do have to be really, really careful. So it's always good to go with a group of people and a guide who knows what they're doing. And that is what Emmaus Moto Tours does. So check them out at EmmausMototours.com. Finally, the road started to descend. But this meant that there were even more twisties. And that meant that we had to lean through the twisties no. and there was more grinding. And my worry level was increasing more and more. It sounded it's like good. a pod racer with, you know, <laughs> something stuck in one of the engines, you know. Nice Star Wars reference, right. yeah. Our motorcycle Dorco, we have named the motorcycle, it is a Bajaj Pulsar 220 that we purchased in Jakarta. And it, it was never awesome to begin with. Nope. It, it never sounded awesome. It's an older bike. Yeah. We put it through a lot being so too up and overloaded yeah. as we are. And to, to, just to be clear, we knew that we weren't buying like, yeah. you know, eight inches of suspension travel. <laughs> You know, and we got it from our buddies, uh, Greg and Mel hey. Turp, and they're awesome and yes. we love you. And by no means are we disappointed in, in you or the bike as total. But I think mm. the four of us know more than anybody else watching here that that bike wasn't... Uh, Dorco was living up to its name. ...wasn't destined to go around <laughs> the world. Going around the island of Java was also a bit of a challenge for Dorco. Yes. And uh, it was really struggling around these turns. Now, normally being a 220 and us so heavy, it struggles going up hills. We know that. Um, the suspension for any so pothole is terrible. <laughs> it's pretty much the uphills and the downhills. And, and the, the turning. turning now. It was yeah. like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, usually people are dying to go on these wonderfully twisty roads. I mean, yeah. this road was in really good condition. It was nicely paved. It had these gorgeous twisties. The weather was great. The views were fantastic. Yeah. We hadn't been exploded in an eruption yet. I mean, everything was turning out to be perfect. But our bike couldn't do twisties. Yeah. I couldn't even do like gradual turns. We, we were to, chuggling along. We had to chuggle. We had to chuggle. Chuggle. <laughs> chuggling along. Finally, as we got out from between the volcanoes, the road leveled out and we could see these smaller little volcanoes along the way to Semarang. And Semarang was our destination that night. It's this huge port city on the northern coast of Java that has a population of 1.62 million people. That's a lot of people. It, it is a lot of people, yeah. but you know, this is it's a Indonesia, very so. Important city. Ooh, it is. And from there, we were going to be taking a ferry to Borneo. And so we were really excited to get there. But this issue with the motorcycle was just grinding on our minds. Aww. Yeah, I think when you said that, this one's bomb. So we're going to have to cut Aww. that pun, which is fine. It was not very good. Cut it. No. Yeah.
I pulled over to the gas station to kind of uh, further inspect what the problem was. And sure enough, it was the fact that the center stands would kind of uh, you know, be loose, you can just kind of play with it like a loose tooth. And when you put it on the center stand, when we f had first bought it, you put it on the center stand and the front of the bike was raised up. But yeah. over the course of using the center stand as loaded as we were, like the center stand was starting to mm -hmm. buckle in on itself. Yeah. And so then both of the wheels were flat, mm -hmm. level. On the center stand. On the center stand. No, and so I tried good. to use like the kickstand as like a backup, but the back, the, the kickstand was now this, the hinge of that was all messed up. And that was weak to begin with. We were warned right from the beginning, like don't yeah. put all the weight of the motorcycle on the kickstand, especially when you have it loaded. You can, you can, uh, yeah, Okay. Yeah. So we were never really using because the kickstand. The kickstand stand. uses like a 45 degree angle. Oh, so like any so weight on angled. it. Yeah. Yeah. It, we were realizing there was no way to park this motorcycle. No. And as we're sitting there in the, the little gas station, I could see that the kickstand went, went all the way up. It was rubbing against the chain. And yeah. so like I'd spin the back tire and I'd be like ding, 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 yeah. against the, the, the rivets of the chain. And I said, well, that that's really bad. That's not good. And it wasn't even lightly rubbing against the chain. Yeah. The kickstand was against the chain and the center stand was pushing the kickstand. So whenever we were scraping along the ground yeah, and it was it pushing, it, it, yeah, it was pushing the center stand, which pushed, pushed the kickstand, which was grinding against the chain. You can imagine like, this is an awful, awful situation. And I could see that the panniers when they put them on, like this was like a Bajaj 220, like yeah. it's not a touring it's bike. It's not right? an adventure bike. Yeah, certainly. so they like converted it to be able to have side panniers on it. Right. But in order to do that, you know, they had to hang them low enough, and then it got into the way of the muffler. So they had to cut the original muffler mount and drop the muffler a little bit. But when they dropped the muffler a little bit, the on the on the muffler is this little tab that the, the center stand actually comes up and hits and that's its you know little bouncer, its little bumper. Yeah, and that's why it was so low. And that's right? why it's so low. And so just everything was pushed down. And there's nothing we can do about that. No. So my solution to at least get the kickstand from coming all the way back up and into the chain is I you know <laughs> I use zip ties because that's my Yeah, I mean what are you tool. gonna do? Yeah, and I just zip tied it so that they would be held up and out. But again, not the most ideal, because now we could never use the kickstand. Right. We already knew that the center stand was failing, but <laughs> hopefully not to the point where it would just break off and then just we'd have to use like the force to keep the <laughs> to bike keep up. keep it up, right? We zip tied the kickstand so that it's no longer rubbing against the chain. Oh, Torco. We got back on the bike and headed into Summarize. Some awesome traffic on Java. So Java is extremely densely populated, if you haven't already noticed from our videos. Yeah. And uh, Samarang is the same. It is your typical city of the region that is full of traffic and pollution and full of people and motorcycles everywhere. This had a lot of like culture to it too. There was some yeah. old Dutch stuff. They had medians with like grass and right. bushes and art and stuff. Yeah, and beautiful park spaces, yeah. beautiful roundabouts. Yeah, I loved that street art that we were passing. Yeah. And some really modernized architecture of their buildings. This town of Semarang also has a colonial center to it, the yeah, old cool. historic district that has architecture that's reminiscent of the Dutch period in Indonesia. Yeah, I really liked the cobbled streets with the little yeah. lamp posts. I'm 
remember us had typed in some like hotel to go to. It's called like Pods R Us or whatever. <laughs> so, and, and so we get there and we get off and I'm really excited because the bike sucks. I finally get it parked. She had already gone in. And by the time I go in, we're about to pay. And they're like, oh, two pods? And I was like, pods? pods. <laughs> And the place is called like two peas in a pod or one person in a pod. <laughs> one <laughs> person in a pod. I know. I was like, oh, I'm like, hey, I get we it. Don't want to sleep in space no, capsules. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and so we were really struggling actually to find a hotel that had vacancy. Every place yeah. was just fully booked. We ended up in a different cultural yes. region. A whole new culture that we had not experienced before, and that is where we found our hotel. But that will all be in the next episode. So thank you so much for watching this one. I hope you liked it. If you did, please give us a big thumbs up and hit the subscribe button below. And we'll be seeing you next time. Stay safe, everybody. And don't forget, if Patreon is your thing, we would love it if you joined our journey and helped support us. With just a dollar a month, you can gain access to exclusive content and videos without ads and all sorts of other things like Random postcards, postcards and stuff. So yeah, yeah check it out at Patreon slash 2UP and Overloaded. Link in the description below, guys. Bye. Peace.